Johnny, the, the concept of the album was songs. Uh, actually, I told Johnny, I said, you know, a lot of a lot of recordings, and I knew this through research. A lot of people and record companies wanted you to go more commercial. They didn't want you to play blues. They wanted to play rock, and your rock period was very important. But uh, you know, let's do a whole record of blues because oh, I'd, I'd love to do that. Every 60 seconds of the minute, every 60 minutes of the hour. So he goes, well, what do I need to do? I go, you just need to pick the songs, but let's make it one song by an artist that influenced you growing up. One by Chuck Berry, one by T-Bone, one by... He goes, oh, I lo- okay. And so he picked the songs in like 15 minutes. And I said, okay, great. Now I'll go out and I'll find the artists that match these songs best. So that's what I did. And then in knowing that, that that's what I had to do, I made sure that the arrangements suited the artists that I had in mind to come in. So obviously, Billy Gibbons had more of a chug because he'd be top kind of chug to it. After I knew that he was a fan of Bobby Blue Bland, so that was a no-brainer. Uh, um, Dr. John, you know, Blue Monday, that's a New Orleans kind of type of, you know, groove and feel, so so that's what I did. And then I made sure that the production value was traditional, but still had a modern edge to it, so we wouldn't lose any any fans on, on either side. So that, that's, that's the broad brush of how it was put together. And there was a lot of time in the studio, you know, so. Plus, we, had, we were going back, we were, thanks, we were going back and forth to Japan. So we'd, we'd have everything set and scoot out and come back, and it's like, oh, we had to start, yeah. So there was, yeah, we were doing some, so many gigs. It wasn't that, you know, it was a lot of, you know, to keep it, keep it consistent. America, blues people, sound bite. I feel it is two things, two ways you can go into this. If you have a depressed feeling, all right, that's, that's all together one thing. And then if you have what you call uh, a happy feeling about a thing, that's all together another. And they both can give you inspirations to sing. You know what I mean? So if you, if it's joyful, well, naturally that's that's you 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 build this another way. But if it's something that you kind of put you down in the dumps, as they call it, why, you carry that another way. You express yourself in different directions. So, of course, now, I can't say that I've found it where I had to, uh, well, be in the dumps, as we put it, all the time. Some of the time, it would be joyful things that I could think of, you know. But I tell you what, in most cases, the way I feel, in most cases, you... You, the song will come to you when you really are depressed, you know. I mean, words will come to you and you'll feel them and you decide you'll do something about it. So the, something that you do about it is more or less put in rhymes for words and make them come out. It gives you, it kind of helps somehow. I don't know, it kind of helps. Blues America, like cornbread and chili. Mmm, doggy. Damn, that's good. How did Johnny Winter want to be remembered? He always, he always said, period, I, I just want to be remembered as a blues man. He, that's the only title he wanted. He didn't want rock attached to his name at all. That's how much he loved the blues. That's it. And that's why I wrote that song, I'm a blues man, for that record. He made that the title track. He said, I want to be a blues man until I die. So I was like, hmm, okay, I'm a blues man. Yeah, me talking to you, woman. I'm serious as a heart attack. Yeah, I'm talking to you, woman. 
As previously mentioned, uh, the album Step Back won a Grammy Award. Uh, you were the producer, guitarist, and featured artist on this album. And, of course, after Johnny's death, you accepted the uh, Grammy Award. Take me back to the Grammys and, and tell me what you remember uh, about being on stage. I, 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 I broke down. I, I lost it. it. It hit me like a floodgate. The minute I stood up there, you know, I, was accept- I got an award and Johnny got an award. You know, the producer gets it, Johnny gets it. And all of a sudden, you're standing up there, you're holding it, and, and, and all these memories of him just rush through your head. And it's like, oh, brother, you know, I wish he was here to see this. But he did hear the full album. He did see the full movie. And he actually leaned over and he, when um, we were mixing, when I played him some of the mixes, he said, Paul, we don't get a Grammy for this. They're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I go, well, we'll see. Yeah, so... And that, that's what I remembered when I, you know, went to the awards last year. So, yeah. I got enough with all your mind games. The sick and tired of this so sea. Now, Paul, as part of your blues legacy, uh, you earned a Keeping a Blues Alive Award for your many contributions to this industry. Uh, what was that like? That, I didn't see coming. Was, uh, I got a call from uh, uh, um, the head of the Blues Foundation, Jay, and um, uh, I said, wow, I, I didn't see. He goes, you're, you're going to get it for the, you know, the work you've done. And uh, keeping the blues alive, and uh, I was like, "Wow!" He goes, "Well, I got to tell you, the the people that uh, nine nine times out of ten, the people that deserve it the most are the ones that really didn't know why they were getting it." And he goes, "You're one of those." And I go, "Well, thank you very much. It was really nice." So that was something else. Yeah, that was that was another one of those because it's, it's voted by all the people in the industry, so that's pretty cool. Bone and a mojo too. It's Blues America. Paul Nelson, we're out of time today. My last question is. Tell me, what is the blues? Uh, again, it's, it's it's pretty similar to everybody else. It is a soul, a feel thing. Johnny would say that it's, it's a feeling. It's a, I mean, but uh, that's that's the broad brush of it. But you do have to learn your craft, and you have to sit there and practice, and you have to listen to the masters and all the ones that came before you to get it to get it down. But then, yes, once you have everything down, then it's a soul and a feel thing, absolutely. But to get to that point. You have to practice. You have, and it doesn't matter what walk of life you come from. You have to work on it and play it over and over and over again. And then it it, it hits you. And it, depending upon the artist you listen to that inspire you, you're going to grab their influences. You know, if you listen to Johnny a lot, if you listen to T-Bone, if you listen to whomever. But uh, then, like I said before, you forget everything and you just play. And that's when the soul and the feel and all this. You can't just pick up a guitar and say, oh, I'm a very feeling, soulful person. Oh, I'm going to be the best right now. I haven't listened to anything yet. It doesn't happen that way. So are there prodigies? Are there people that, you know, that are born with it or whatever? No, they all have to practice. Some may get it quicker, depending upon how well they focus. But, uh, yeah, then once you have it, it's in you. But it is soul and feel and, and that kind of thing. But, uh don't let the soul and feel fool you into the point where you think it's just going to happen. There's a lot of work involved. We do the down home boogie. We do the down home boogie. Well, there you have it, folks. It's Paul Nelson. Links to his website is available on bluesamerica.com. And his new album is out now. Go check it out. The Way Way Back Blues is straight ahead.
Blues America is endorsed by the Phoenix Blues Society. Learn how to become a member at phoenixblues.org. What we're going to do right here is go back. Way back. Back into time. It's time to go back, baby. Way, way back. This is the Way, Way Back Blues. with William McKinley Gillum, better known and more famous under his stage name, Jazz Gillum, with the song Tell Me Mama. Gillum was a street performer in his youth who later moved to Chicago from Mississippi and teamed up with Big Bill Brunzi. It's believed the jazz nickname was used to make him sound more sophisticated. After about 10 years of performing in clubs, Gillum and Brunzi recorded for Bluebird Records. In 1940, Gillum recorded what some considered the first version of the blues standard, key to the highway. This would later be controversial as Gillum and Brunzi fought over the song rights, which nearly ended their friendship. However, Brunzi's version would later become 